Hi, this is Russell Stanner from teachertrainingvideos.com. Today we're gonna to look at TED-Ed. If you use video in the class with your students, then it's great if you can get them to answer questions and do activities before, during, and after the video. It would also be great if you could actually capture that information. Perhaps you might want to set the video as homework. So this is really good, for example, for a flipped classroom scenario. I'm gonna show you how TED-Ed works. One of the things I really like about TED-Ed, you can choose any video, create learning activities around it, but it will Will also give you feedback on your students answers even if they don't log in and that's one of the reasons why I particularly like this tool. So what I'm going to try and do is look at a real example, quickly show you what a TED example would look like and how the students would work through it. I'm going to then quickly find the video and create an, a whole activity around that video so you can see exactly how to create the activities. I'm then going to show you exactly what it looks like from the student's point of view if they work through the activities and do the exercises. And I'm also going to show you, which is really important, what the teacher sees at the end. So what feedback do you get if the students do an activity? Let's get straight into it. Before we start with TEDx, let's just be clear about exactly what I'm suggesting and why it's so good. You can take any video from YouTube and turn it into a learning activity. And I've quickly done one here where we've got a video about the life of plastic bottles. And then after watching, the students have got a think stage where they can discuss and then write their answer. Then they've got a think deeper stage, including a link to uh, some more reading that I want them to do. Then a discussion that I want them to do in groups and then a final. Now, I can create these in a very short space of time. And the great thing is that students do not need to be logged in to answer these questions. So you can set your activities so that they're accessible by students by simply clicking on the link. Now, students could watch the videos in class and work in groups. They could work in pairs. They could work individually. They could do the activities at home. You really have a lot of options. And that's one of the reasons why I like TEDx so much. So let's quickly do an example together. Obviously, you do need to create an account as a teacher. Now, I've obviously already got an account, but you will need to actually, uh, so let me just log out so you can kind of see. You will need, of course, to register. So you can click here and register and put in your details um, and create an account for yourself. I'm just gonna quickly log in. When you log in, all you need to do once you've done that is simply to click on create a lesson and then once you create a lesson, the first thing you need to do is to basically find a video. So I'm gonna write in here, life of plastics. In fact, let's just put in here, funny presentation, because it's another one that I often use. So you can actually search for the video that you want to work with, and I'm gonna use, uh, let's have a look, look if I can find the one I like. Uh, not there, let's have a look if it's on the next page. Yep, there it is, so I'm gonna use that one there. So click on that, that's the video. Click on continue, so the video is now available and immediately I can now begin to start to add my actual activities. It's that simple to get a video ready and to start working with it. Now I'm gonna go quickly through these uh, different sections, but basically what you're gonna do is build a lesson around that video and it begins with let's begin and you might for example say to someone here a simple question like what do you think is important when giving a presentation okay so this video is all about presentation it includes lots of mistakes it's one that I often use uh, I could make that question a lot longer. I could say, well, what do you think is important when giving a presentation? What would be five essential guides to giving a presentation, etc." So you produce your questions. Now, these are questions that will appear before the video is watched. Then you come into the think stage, and this is where you can add different ones. So you might have an open art question, for example, name five mistakes the presenter makes, okay? So that would be one of my questions. That's not a question, that's a statement. So uh, I'm just gonna put there, name five make mistakes the presenter makes, and I'm gonna click on that uh, as one. Now I'm gonna add another question here, but this time I'm gonna use multiple choice. Multiple choice is quite easy. I'm just gonna say here, what does he drop on the floor? Okay, and 
all I need to do here is to put the answer in and to identify which is the correct answer. So what I'm going to say in this particular case is uh, that A is the correct answer. I click here to, to show which is the correct answer. So I'm going to click on A and I'm going to say the, the, the whiteboard. So I'm just going to write that in. And the second one I'm going to put here is his computer, which is not the right answer. And the third one is I'm going to put his uh, lion is carrying a lion with him uh, first answer is correct now something really interesting here if I don't want to put four answers in I don't have to all I can do is just delete an answer by clicking here and just deleting so that answer is included but I can also add a video hint and that is if you get the answer wrong then it would jump to a certain point of the video so I could decide where I want the, the video to jump to if the user gets the answer wrong so it's a really nice uh, addition uh, that's been added into uh, working with TEDx and I really like that feature. If I come down here to the bottom, click on save and I'm very happy with what I've done there. Now I could add more. Okay, so if you want to add more multiple choice questions or more open-ended questions, then I'm going to click on dig deeper. Now this is a real opportunity to perhaps get the students to read further or to think further. Now in this, in this case, normally in this part, I normally give them something to read. So I've got an, an article here at the top of the page. I want them to read it. It's basically 10 tips on giving a good presentation. And I'm just going to say, read this article about uh, giving a good presentation. And what I can do as well is actually add the link to that last part there. So I'm just going to put there and click on link, paste the link in. So I'm just going to enter the link here and click on save and now that becomes active. Now, one nice thing about the way that uh, TEDx now works is that I can, for example, organize this in terms of a reading and give that a title. And then if I've got any perhaps blogs that I want them to read, then I could add a blog section, etc., and just tidy it up and make it a lot tidier. And in the past, you couldn't do that. There was very limited in terms of the way the text works. So that's great as well. Uh, that's your, your disc. Uh, so once the students have done a reading, you might want them to have a discussion afterwards. So for example, I'm just going to say, here's the prompt. It's going to say, uh, have a class discussion on the following. Okay, so and I'm going to add here the, the points again. Uh, number one, uh, what is key to being a good presenter? That's a question, so put a question mark there. I could add another question. So, for example, what uh, mistakes do most presenters make? etc etc and add more questions okay and then there's a kind of food for thought section at the end here which is obviously really a, ch a chance to reflect and finally and so you might hear what have you learned today what have you learned today what more would you like to learn okay or what else actually i should say there really want more Okay, so that's kind of a reflective part at the end. All done. So we've created our activity and now we want to share it. And to do that, we're going to click on publish. And very, very simply, it's going to offer me, do you want the students who are going to answer this question to log in to their TEDx account, TEDed account, sorry, or are we simply just going to ask them to write in an, a name, a nickname or whatever they want. And in fact, I use this, particularly if I'm going to use it in the classroom, because I put the students into groups, say six groups, and each group logs in as a group. So group one, group two, group three, etc. So this means that students do not need to have an account to use TEDx, and that makes it great. If I click on share your lesson here, there's the link to the lesson. And now what we're going to do is actually do that class so you can see it from the student's point of view. So I'm going to log in now on another browser and actually have a look at that activity. So now I'm literally coming in as the student. OK, and I've got that question. So what do you think is important when giving a presentation? Remember that we set that question before you watch the video. You then watch the video. Let me just click those off. You then watch the video. And then after you've watched the video, so I would just click on here to see nice and big screen as well, which is great. You don't really need to go full screen if you've got the video that big. Then we come to the think stage. Remember, we've got those questions and this is where you get the chance to put your name. So if, imagine I've got my students in, say, five groups. This might be group one. 
and click on save. So now I know group one's answers, okay? Uh, so the come back again to that page here. What five mistakes, uh, uh, name five mistakes the presenter makes. So then I would write in mis uh, um, mistakes there. I'll just put one in just as an example. So you can see how the students could then add their answers here. So I'm gonna say that he wasn't prepared. I'm gonna save my answer. And then we come to the next question. Now remember this next question was multiple choice and the correct answer is A, but I'm gonna click on his lion. And the reason I'm gonna do that is because if we click on save my answer, it's gonna tell me, hang on a minute, you didn't get that right. So I'm gonna click on video hint and it's gonna jump to that part of the video. That is wonderful uh, and really, really useful. And of course that only happens if you get the answer wrong. If you get the answer right, it doesn't force you to do that. Now we're coming to the additional resources. And in this case, we've got uh, a, I didn't um, make that look very tidy actually, sorry about that, I needed to create that again. But anyway, you can see that I can click on the link and it's gonna bring me to the actual article that I needed to read. So that's great, so you, that's where your additional readings would be in your blogs, but I should have formatted that a bit better. Click on the next section, then we've got this classroom discussion. Uh, and if we kind of click here, we can see what the questions were. And in this case, it's what is key to being a good presenter and what makes mistakes the presenters make. So students would work on that uh, as a discussion. And then there's a finally section where we have chance to reflect and think about what we've learned today. And again, you'd probably do that as a group discussion. So you can see it's really easy for the students to work through the activity. And the great thing is they don't need to log in. Log in. Sometimes teachers get fed up with students always having to log into systems to make them work or to, to uh, to add in their content. So this is a really ad big advantage of working with TED-Ed. Now let's have a quick look at what the teacher sees. And if I come back now to logging into TEDx and come down to my lesson. So I've just come into my, uh, my lessons. I can see my latest lesson. I can see that one person's already done that activity. So if I click on view students work, I can see that it's been completed by one person and I can review their work and see their answers and actually look at what they put. So here, if I come down to the think stage, the answer that they gave is not prepared. And then if I come to the other one, the answer they gave is his lion. So I can review the student's work even though I didn't actually get my students to log in because even if they don't log in, it does allow you to simply add in a name and to be able to kind of um, to work through the material. And that's one of the reasons I really like TED Ed because you do have that choice uh, if you don't want to um, force your students to actually log in. Just coming back to the uh, opening page here, uh, notice of course it does tell you which uh, login they use. So this was group one. one, one completed from group one and total attempts and it gives me that and then I can actually review and I can even download the students' responses. Now I've never done this, so let's have a quick look and see what that is. I'm guessing that's gonna open up some kind of uh, Excel file and uh, hopefully then we'll be able to have a look at the results. And yeah, it's just simply showing me really the answers to the questions that they, they put, simple as that. Hi, this is Russell Stanow from teachertrainingvideos.com. Really hope you like that video on using TED Ed. Please come to teachertrainingvideos.com. Lots more free videos for you to make use of. There's a newsletter that you can sign up to. Don't worry, I only use the information for myself. It's not shared with anybody else at all. Uh, you get a newsletter and you get the occasional free offers and webinars and special deals that I've got available. So please sign up to the newsletter if you want to. If you don't, just click here and you've got all this free content. One section you might be particularly interested in is YouTube. Uh, we've looked at how you can add activities uh, around YouTube videos, but lots of videos, for example, on how to use your YouTube channel. If you have a Gmail account, you have a YouTube channel and well worth watching those videos. Another very popular section is Russell's five minute blog and finally if you really want to keep up with what I'm doing then please follow me on my YouTube channel because I had lots of videos onto there that you won't find uh, within the website and thank you very much